Hey guys, it's Chris, and welcome back to another Amiga thing. So, you have yourself an Amiga, and you just happen to have yourself a Pi Storm. Whether you're rocking a 3A or the new 02W, you're rocking Mushashi, got the networking configured RTG, life is good. But what if you wanted to dabble in the new Emu 68? We're going to cover that in this video, and we're going to go over a couple different ways you can do it. I'm going to show you how you build Emu 68 from ground zero, and then I'll show you some pre-configured options that you don't have to really do anything except burn an image and enjoy it. That'll get you the knowledge to do this yourself, where you can expand on other things and grow from there. Now, what's the difference? Mushashi is the current original emulator for the Pi Storm that they're using, and it works great. And it has been being developed steadily for well over a year now and has good support and has grown a lot. Emu 68 is a bare metal hardware emulator. Meaning what? What does that mean? Mushashi is an interpretive emulator, meaning you want to issue a command. Let me see how you do that. Oh, there it is. And do it. A bare metal hardware emulator is direct. It's there is no operating system to do it, it's just the emulator runs off of the Pi and talks directly with the hardware. Think of it as like a Mythlons kind of, sort of, not really, but very similar in some of the setups. Okay, so we're on my computer now and I have inserted in my PC the USB drive, uh, thumb drive, I'm um, sorry, the micro SD that has the current Mushashi Pi Storm stuff on it. You can see the basics here. There's also a Linux partition that I'm not worried about at the moment. So I'm going to format this SD card. Do you get to keep your stuff? Not in this example. So we're just going to do a quick format. This is a 16 gig card. Doesn't matter. This will format at FAT32. That's great. I just wanted to show you that so you can see that my card is empty okay okay so with our SD card formatted with SD card formatted we're gonna run disk mgmt.msd now this is on Windows so I'm gonna make this big now the reason I did SD card formatter FAT32 was for identification purposes if you have a bunch of drives or a USB reader you're gonna have a bunch of stuff so right now on this poop drive this is my 16 gig uh, card we're gonna say delete the volume Great. We're going to right click, make a new simple volume. There we go. Hit next. We're going to give it about 250 megabytes in size. And you can assign the following drive letter and you can format it FAT32 if you want. And I'm going to call it boot. Whoops. Booty. <laughs> boot. Great. It'll format and do its thing. Do, 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 do. Now, this 14.8. 18 gigabytes your space will vary from my card this is again for example purposes only and we're going to do this the same way we're going to right click on here and we're going to say new simple volume next give it all the onions whatever and we are not going to format this volume we want it to be raw space why because we got to change some stuff. Okay, so now we got this raw partition. So I'm going to open a command prompt here as administrator. Whoops. We're going to run disk port. And then we're going to do list disk. We know my card is disk 2, so select disk 2. And now we're going to do a, a list, <coughs> excuse me, part, which will list the partitions. Now you see that 250 megabyte drive? That's the one we just created, drive letter G for me. And we have that 14 gigabyte raw partition, okay? So we're gonna type select part two. And now we're gonna do uh, set ID equals seven six. And that's gonna change the partition type to 76. Hey, do you know what uses partition type 76? Yeah, the Amiga. Okay, so we're done with that, right? So we'll just type exit, and then exit again. So 
we're not going to touch this, okay? So go ahead and close that and ignore any errors you're going to get popping up. So let's go into that boot drive, right? And I downloaded the EMU 68 and I'm just going to extract it right here. Boop. Hey, look familiar? That's cool. You're going to notice there is a config file inside. All right. So with that copied, I went and go ahead and found my ROMs. You can always get yours out of your Amiga files directory. Um, but default, the config text looks for a file called kick.rom. It could also be renamed depending on the nightly build. It could say init ram uh, fs kick 321 or kick 32. You can edit the config text here with Windows. Just kind of scroll down a little bit for the bottom line. This one is looking for a file called kick.rom in this directory. So I'm going to grab my kick here. We're going to take this kick 314 rom and just stick it here. And then we're going to rename it. And you can press F2 to rename also. And just call it, uh, oops, kick.rom. Now it is case sensitive too, so make sure you're all lowercase. And that's it. Awesome sauce. Now what? Now what are we going to do? Well, we're going to put eject this card and we're going to put it in our Raspberry Pi for the Pi Storm. And we're going to fire it up on the Amiga 500. And I'm going to show you how to boot. I'm going to have to use a GoTech because I don't have an actual floppy disk in this one. But we'll boot off of uh, 314, for example. And I'll show you how to partition the hard drives the long way, and then we'll go over a much faster way to do this entire thing. We're done the EMU 68, and we're now plugged into the Pi Storm here on this Rev5 Amiga 500. Because I'm using a Pi 02W, I had to go find one of these micro HDMI doohickeys because I just want to show you one thing. I only needed a foot, but I got a six foot. By default, this is going to go out this. It's going to show you the 68 logo and the EMU. So this is the RTG side. What does this do for you? Nothing at this time. And I'm not going to cover that RTG stuff. I want to show you how you set up EMU 68. The base bare metal hardware emulator. This thing is freaking awesome. Michael Schultz is the author of this. Made this himself with the old programming skills. He's a master. I will link in the description below everything I have about this the Discord, the, the wonderful team that always help each other out. It's great. With that, I'm going to press my button, and we should be at a kickstart screen. So remember I copied the 314 ROM? So that's what we have. We have an Amiga with a 314 ROM. I'm showing you this for a reason. Te teach, a man to teach a man to fish, okay? Now, I'm putting a bag underneath mine because I don't trust it, and I think it hits. It's pretty tight, so I'm just going to leave a bag there. We're going to turn this on, and we're going to boot off of install 314, okay? Now remember, this is a floppy. This is the long way to do something. But the only reason I'm doing this is to show you the hard drive setup. We're going to go into install. Mice everywhere. HD tools. And this HD toolbox. We're going to right click at the top and say information, or right Amiga I. You're going to change, now I've changed this one already. Yours is going to say SCSI.device. You're going to name it SCSI underscore device underscore name equals BRCM dash SDHC dot device. Okay? Now, if you wanted this not to scan forever, you know how it goes. Device 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You can change this SCSI max logical unit number to 0. That way... It will, you know, scan faster. Hit save, and then launch HD Toolbox as normal. Now, the important part of all of this, like a Mithlon, is do not change this one. That is that boot partition for the Pi Storm. SCSI device one. Okay, we're gonna change derived type. We're gonna define a new read configurations. Okay, whatever. Remember my 14-ish gig drive. Cool, huh? Okay. Whatever. Partition drive. 
drag this sucker down. I'll need to delete this one. Delete. I'm going to give myself two, I don't care, two gigs. I'm going to call it the H0. It's bootable. I could crank up buffers because I have RAM. I'll give it 300. Great. And then we'll, oops, I forgot to make another partition. I'm saying new partition. Big mama. Not bootable. Okay, you can do direct SCSI transfer if you want. So again, DH0, DH1, 13 gig. Okay, save changes to drive, exit. Now you'll do your normal reboot. The kick ROM and all that stuff. Whoops. What happened here? Why did that happen? I rebooted, but I'm getting not a device delay. Okay, it has a higher boot priority than my stupid floppy. So I'm a double mouse button. Choose my external floppy for the boot partition. Boot options, DF1, use boot. Please disregard this SCART NTSC. That's the Chinesium upscaler that likes to hold that on the screen for way too long. All right, so here you can see as we're booted, we have DF0 is normal because I don't have a DF0. We're going to do DH0 format. Once again, this will be called for me, system, no trash can like Jesus would use, and quick format, good good this is a you want to call this a virtual hard drive this is not like a hard disk file this is an actual partition on your device okay there's system I could install workbench to it DH1 again icon format disk now this is a 12 gig drive I may have to up the block size in HD toolbox if this does not format Quick format, okay, yep. 512 block size on 12 gig might give me an out of memory error. Don't know. Oh, it worked. If you do, you can edit the block size in HD Toolbox. 12.2 gigs, you could install Workbench as normal and boot, which I will do real quick and blip back. Okay, so this is your standard 314 message about the CPU libraries. It's not 3.2. I don't have those libraries. But what I can do is take that out and put 3.2 in and load its stupid little disk and install the CPU libraries. Other. Could I continue and go and build this 3.14, 3.2, whatever you want, 3.2.1 up and do it all hunky-dory? You sure can. Everything's great and we have a system and we can do stuff. Well, let's get a baseline. Okay, so we're going to put in sysinfo. This drive, 4.4. Okay, it's by default 68040. Whoops. Now, yes, I know sysinfo isn't the best test for JIT stuff. So we're going to hit speed. Kickstart 314, what I copied originally. This is currently on an Amiga 500 Rev 5. It is running at 627 MIPS, 595.04 megaflops, 600,755 dry stones. We are currently 1,135 times faster than an Amiga 600. That's our baseline for EMU 68. I'm going to flip flop this right back to the other Pi Storm, which is still in my 3A here. Just take this card out and put it in and boot. Let me do that. So this is my original Pi Storm thing. Same sysinfo we're going to launch. And we're just going to hit speed. Now remember the other one was 600,000 dry stones. 600 something MIPS. This is 17 MIPS, 7 mega flops. 31 times faster. 16,796. Motor rolling. Okay. 6830, 881, 030, not in use. Doesn't matter, regardless of it's an 030 or an 040, I can change it in a config on the fly. You saw that little bit of what we had? Here's the EMU 68. You can just feel it's faster. It's just, you can feel it. Movement. Look at that. 628, 594. It's the same Amiga. It's, I know nothing different. It's just right here. Way better. Memory, of course, 236 megs of 32 bit RAM. 112 meg of whatever that is, 
8 megs of fast RAM. It's got all sorts of RAM in here. I don't know what's going on. So we got a bunch of different RAMs. Um, I don't know if the drive speed is going to work. Let's see. DHO speed. Uh, whoa. It does. So it's 20 megs per second. That's pretty good. You can see it's the BRCM-SDHC device. I'm, I'm doing FFS. You could do PF3S, P3FS if you want to. Whatever you want. It's up to you. DH1. That's my big mama. 20 megs. If I hit it again, it's not like the previous one where it's 700 megs and cached. That's all addressed. We have a standard SCSI bust. Bust? Standard SCSI bust. The disk zero, of course, is my unknown format because that's my FAT32 partition that makes the magic of EMU68 happen. But this has been a quick and dirty how to build your own from scratch. So there is a final easy way to do all of this and have your cookies and eat them too. Ta-da! I'm all done. I ain't got to do a daggone thing. This is Caffeine OS that will automatically set you up with Emu68 and everything you freaking need without doing all that crazy crap that I just did. So why should you even, why'd you even tell me about that? Well, I wanted you to learn. It doesn't list out the chip RAM and the free RAM and all that stuff. It's just your basic workbench and some stuff. Stuff like videos, MPEG, animals, Pry Rods, Reva. Yep, Reva player, animals. But see, look, I don't, I don't have sound on this HDMI splitter. Caffeine OS is based is built off of Directory Opus 582. It's the workbench replacement, kind of like Scalos is workbench replacement. But this is registered to the Nosferatu's at 68080 Rolls, Transylvania. 666 out of this world. Serial number, bunch of whatever. I don't know. Getting text bombed again. So that's why this looks this way. This is actually Directory Opus. You know, it is what it is. It looks nice though. Caffeine's pretty cool. It's it is just directory opus. So you have all these nice windows and menus and it's pretty cool though, isn't it? Everything's all set up. Network on, network off, Samba FTP. Does that work? Network on. Network is not implemented on the Pi Storm. Okay. Office, what do we got? Editors, FX Paint, P Paint. That's not Office. Page Stream, Rhino PDF, Photogenics, 3D. We got Cinema 3 4D Lightwave. Plotter warp, jeez, whiz warp 3D. We got some fractals on here. I mean, you guys can check it out yourself, but I'm getting text bombed. Hold on. Okay, that was Mr. Kevin helping him set up his Pi Storm. There we go. That's Caffeine OS. It's an image you can download. And we got Mac OS on here. Scum VM. Let's see how they're. Oh, look, it's the Mac OS from Pimega. This is not fast. Oh my god, this is slow. Oh my god, this is so slow. Oh look, it's the same damn... It's the same damn drive. It's stripped down a little bit. Oh my goodness, is this slow. No, it's the same exact drive. King's Quest, Leader's Seat, Larry 5 and 6, Fate of Atlantis, Doom, Duke Nukem. But, look, it emulates a Mac pretty good. Pi Storm is pretty slow at it, but it works. Nice icons, by the way, guys. Nice icons. Scum VM is on there. That's the PC uh, emulator with a bunch of pre-configured games for stuff. All of these are from Coffin OS. The Mac emulator, everything is pre-set up from Coffin. So props to Coffin, MSX, Sinclair, the Stella, Neo Geo, this is the exact same ones from Pimega and from Coffin. So anyway, that is the long way, the slow way, and the easy way to get yourself on Emu 68, the next generation of the Pi Storm. And they're, like I said before, the team does a wonderful job. It's a team. A lot of people are working on this. Michael's busting his butt writing this emulator by himself, I think. I don't know. Might be wrong. 
I'll link all the websites and everything I got in the description below. So, hey, PyStorm team, thank you guys for keeping up on this and keeping the Amiga alive in 2022 now. But that's been my take on how to upgrade yourself to EMU 68. Think of it as the next generation of the PyStorm. Revision 2? Something like that. So that is all I got for now. I hope this finds you well. Thank you for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something.